Some people think bunting should be left to pitchers, but I'm here to tell you bunting is an important part of the game that everybody should learn to master, and that's what we're going to talk about next here on Sports School. minor leagues and coming up in the big leagues, bunting was very important because our manager stressed, you know, I was a number two hitter, so when you're the number two hitter, you're going to be asked to do a lot of things. You're going to be asked to bunt, you're going to be asked to play hit and run, you're going to be asked to situational hit, and bunting was a very important part of my game early on. I could run and uh, I could control the barrel, and so I, my favorite bunt was the drag bunt, not necessarily going to third base, but I like to take it with me to first base. And, you know, get three guys chasing it and then try to beat them to the bag. And so, uh, but as I kind of evolved into this hitter, uh, bunting became a little less important. Managers wanted to see me swing the bat a little bit more than, than bunting. But first five years of my career, I used bunting a lot. I was a, I was a pretty good bunter. I'm here with my assistant coach, Mark Martinez. And Mark, when you talk about becoming a good bunter, what are some of the techniques that guys have to have to be a good bunter? Well, first of all, Tony, you know, the, the number one thing about bunting is the team concept. What we're trying to do when we're bunting the baseball is we're trying to advance runners in a scoring position, get, get our offense a, an opportunity to, you know, create a big inning. You know, and technique-wise, there's some definitely some strong mechanics we got to follow in order to get the bunts down and, and uh, speed the defense up when we're bunting the ball, and that's what we're going to try and show right now. The idea of sacrifice bunt is giving yourself up for the team, moving runners into scoring position in order to create a big inning. We're going to start with the runner at first base. We're going to bunt the ball down the first base side. When we bunt this ball, we want our first baseman to field this bunt. We want to try and keep it away from the pitcher or at least make the first baseman make a decision on the bunt. Once we get our sign, from our coach, we know sacrifice is on. We're gonna move ourselves up in the box just a little bit in order to get our bat in fair territory when we square around. Our hand position on the bat, first and foremost, we wanna make sure that our bottom hand stays at the bottom of the bat. That's gonna give us a lot more control with the bat, barrel of the bat. Our top hand's gonna to slide up the bat. We're gonna put our hands in a cut position. We wanna make sure to soften the blow of the ball on the bat. We're gonna Put our hands, hold it in our fingertips in a cup position. Once the pitcher comes set, we're going to show bunt. We're going to come around, square around. We're going to pivot with our back foot. We're going to get the bat to the top of the strike zone and hand the bat to the second baseman with our bottom hand and our top hand. We want our barrel of our bat to be more flat than vertical. We don't want the bat to be vertical. That causes us to drop the bat. We want more weight on our front side of our stance. Nice wide base, more weight on the front, front foot. If the ball's down, we wanna just bend our legs. We wanna make sure we bunt strikes. Once the ball comes, bat's already handed to the second baseman. We've created a great angle to get that bunt down to the first base side. Execute the bunt, move the guy over. We're in scoring position, we're in business. The runner at first and second, the footwork's going to change slightly and our hand position is going to change slightly. We want to bunt this ball down the third base side and we still want to make the third baseman make a decision on the bunt. We don't want the pitcher to feel this bunt and fire the ball over to third base for a force out. We want that third baseman to make a decision to come in and field that bunt in order to advance our runners to second and third. As a right-handed hitter, we get a sack sign. We're going to still move up in the box just a little bit. When he comes set, we're going to show bunt. Our back foot is going to gain ground towards the home plate in order to open us up a little bit and cover the outside part of the plate. When we come around, same principles apply. Nice wide stance, weight on our front side, hand the bat with our top hand to the shortstop. Our bottom hand still pointed at the shortstop. That's going to create that angle we want in order to bunt the ball down the third baseline. <coughs> Same thing, bunt strikes, move up and down with your legs, catch the baseball, get the ball down on the green or on the grass in order to advance our runners to create that big inning for us.
drag bunt is a, a fast bunt. We're trying to get a base hit on this. The third baseman's playing back. We peek down there. He's back a little bit, so we're going to bunt the ball. We're going to show later. We're basically going to show when the front foot lands on the pitcher, we're going to show real fast, get the ball down on the grass on the third base side. On the drag, to, to start, you want to try and start just doing a fast sack. In other words, the same foot position, hand position, we're going to show it later. It's going to be fast. We're going to establish that bat angle and get in that position real fast. That's going to help us have more success getting the ball down. The idea on a drag is not how fast you get out of the box. It's where you bunt the baseball. If you bunt the baseball 25, 30 feet on the third base side next to the chalk, it's a base hit. It doesn't really matter who you are. If you bunt the ball correctly, a good bunt will always work. So we start it with a fast sack right there. Then we can advance. Once we see, experience some success doing that, then we can advance our, our footwork. It'll be a little stride forward and a little hop step. Stride forward, hop step. Or a little bit of a drop step with your back foot. A lot of guys, what they do on drag from the right-handed side is they drop step and they close themselves off and it puts their bat in a really tough angle in order to get the ball down the third base side. That's a tough angle to be, you gotta be real perfect with your bat. If we go here, quick drop step, it gets our bat in a good angle and it gives us more room for error. A bad bunt on a drag situation has got to be foul. We don't want a drag to go to the middle of the diamond. We don't want the pitcher to feel this at all. So if I make a mistake, the mistake is going to be a foul ball. No harm. We reload and get in there and hit a double. push bunt is going to be to the first base side. The idea on a push bunt is we want to make sure that we have three guys chasing the ball. The pitcher, the first baseman, and the second baseman. We want all of those guys chasing the ball. If they do that, we're safe. Bunt placement again is primary. It's, it's very important. On a push bunt, in order to establish our bat angle, we're going to take a stride. That puts us closer to the fair territory. When we stride, our bat follows. Hand the bat to the second baseman. Bottom hand, top hand, hand it to the second baseman. Stride, and we're gonna bunt the ball with our legs on push. Slide the back foot forward and stride again, or push. So it's real easy. If you're talking to yourself, it's stride, slide, push. Base hit. We don't want our barrel moving to the baseball to try and bunt it. So if we put our bat back here and try and move that, we're trying to hit a 90 mile an hour fastball and moving our barrel and place that perfectly to have three guys chase it. It's very difficult. Stride forward, show bunt, slide, push. We want to try and use our legs on, the, on a push bunt. Bunt strikes. We don't want to bunt a ball. That's going to create a bad bunt. A bad bunt on a push, we want to make sure the, th the first baseman is fielding that bunt. We don't want the pitcher fielding it. All right, Mark, that was great. Great information there. And remember here at Sports School, if there's something you don't understand or you miss, you can stop, pause, rewind, or if you got all the information down pat, fast forward. All right, for Mark Martinez, I'm Tony Gwynn for Sports School.